Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Now, in my eyes, because of COVID-19, the most controversial thing regarding movies is, well, streamed films. Now, I have nothing against it, but at the same time, it doesn't feel the same as watching a movie on DVD, Blu-ray, or even in theaters. And I understand that everybody has to stay safe until they get vaccinated, but at the same time, I'm still praying that movie theaters do not go into extinction. Anyway, as we all know, 2020 was a very busy year for streamed movies on services like Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, Apple TV, Netflix, YouTube, and others. And while watching several other reviewers give their thoughts on the movies that were released last year, I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I should look at a few streamed films myself this year. That is, until we all get vaccinated and the cinemas reopen. And of course, thanks to a generous request from a beautiful and kind moon goddess, tonight, I'm going to look at an animated Netflix movie which, in my opinion, may be the best animated movie of 2020. So, released to Netflix on October 23rd, 2020, the movie is Over the Moon. So, let's get started. The story follows a young girl named Feifei, who believes in the stories told by her mother about the Chinese moon goddess Chang'e, who longs for her lost true love, Hoi. Sadly, Feifei's mother dies from a terminal illness. Four years later, Feifei has not yet processed the loss of her mom, while her dad has moved on and is considering marrying again, which sends Feifei for a huge loop, and now she's being asked to welcome a woman named Mrs. Zong into that role, along with an annoying potential stepbrother named Chin. To prove to her dad that her mother isn't really gone, Feifei plots to go to the moon to meet Chang'e. So, she builds a rocket, blasts off into the stars, and is transported into a magical world of helpful dragons and bright creatures. So, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, I really loved it. I love the story, the animation, the music, everything. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just go to Mustang Notes. The film was directed by legendary former Disney animator Glenn Keane, who was responsible for animating films like The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, Pocahontas, Tarzan, and Tangled. And to me, Glenn has not lost his magical touch after leaving the happiest place on Earth in 2012. On September 26, 2017, Audrey Wells was hired to write the script for the movie, which was based on an idea by Janet Yang about a retelling of the classic Chinese myth. On February 6, 2018, Netflix acquired distribution rights to the movie. However, during all this, Audrey Wells sadly passed away from cancer on October 4th, 2018. Over the Moon is dedicated to Audrey's memory. The animation for the film was provided by Pearl Studios, who previously collaborated with DreamWorks to make Abominable. And in my eyes, like Abominable, the CGI does great at capturing China, almost to a T, and... I really love how the animators designed the Kingdom of Lunaria. I mean, not only was it inspired by the cover of Pink Floyd's album, The Dark Side of the Moon, and the paintings of John Miro, but it looks absolutely colorful, kind of like the Land of the Dead from Coco. As for the story, well, I like how the film uses Chinese mythologies and the film's message about dealing with loss makes the movie very emotional and powerful. The film's score was composed by Stephen Price, and the songs were written by Christopher Curtis, 
who wrote songs for Chaplin the Musical, along with Marjorie Duffield and Helen Park, who worked on K-Pop the Musical. Now, I want to talk about five of these songs. Our first song is On the Moon Above, which is sung by Fei Fei's mother, while she tells her daughter the story of Chang'e and her lover Hoi. To me, this song not only feels like a sweet lullaby, but it's also a very romantic and tragic story for the two lovers, due to Chang'e leaving Hoi after taking a potion that made her immortal. Next is Mooncakes, which is where Fei Fei learns to make mooncakes with her family for the annual Moon Festival. By the way, for those who don't know, the Moon Festival is a Chinese event that celebrates the harvest during the autumn full moon ever since the Shang Dynasty. During the festival, people gather their friends and family together, give thanks for their harvest, and pray for a bright future. Kind of like a Chinese version of Thanksgiving. Also, while I may not be a big fan of Chinese food, I'm kind of curious on how mooncakes taste. Because it kind of sounds like something worth trying out. Anyway, to me, this song starts out fun and delightful to listen to. And I like how it describes that mooncakes contain a message from the moon as well as a little bit of magic and memories. But later, the song becomes very sad when Fei Fei's mother becomes ill and passes away, which brings back memories from the beginning of Pixar's Up and Wonder Park. Next is Rocket to the Moon, where Fei Fei expresses her desire and longing to go to the moon to prove of Chang'e's existence. To me, this song is the most emotional, and between the two versions, I think the reprise is my favorite, due to it showing Fei Fei's scientific knowledge and her readiness to blast off. And every time I listen to it, it really puts me in tears. Our next song to talk about is called Hey Boy, which is sung during a Lunarian-styled ping pong game between Chang'e and Fei Fei's stepbrother, Chin. To me, this song feels like it was taken right out of a Lin-Manuel Miranda musical due to the rapping. Plus, I think this year may be the year of Lin-Manuel Miranda musical movies since In the Heights is getting a theatrical release this year, and he's also helping with two animated movies, one from Disney and one from Sony. By the way, while normal ping pong is kind of hard since I played it a few times with a few friends from Troop 604 and Vocational Visions, ping pong with no gravity seems really challenging. And finally, we come to my absolute favorite song in the whole movie, Ultra Luminary, performed by Chang'e and the Lunettes. I'm serious, folks. This song is just awesome. Yes, it does start out very quiet and soft, but then after 35 seconds, it suddenly explodes into a pop concert style dance number, complete with color, flair, and a DJ in the form of Jade Rabbit. Also, I think this song is one of a few that defines 2020, even if it was a terrible year. And while this is an amazing song, I deeply pray that it gets nominated for Best Original Song for this year's Oscars. And now, let's move on to the characters and the voice actors who brought him to life. Our main character, Fei Fei, is voiced by Kathy Ang. Fei Fei is a 14-year-old teenage girl who believes in the moon goddess Chang'e ever since the loss of her mother. To me, Fei Fei is a sympathetic character, but she's also very intelligent and determined, and she doesn't like to give up, and she has a good heart. Also, she is shown as number one in her class, and she admires the maglev train, 
which later gives her the inspiration to build her rocket to the moon. Next, we come to Fei Fei's best friend, Bungie. In my eyes, Bungie has got to be the cutest rabbit in the history of CGI animation. Don't worry, Clover. We still love ya. Anyway, Bungie was given to Fei Fei by her mother before she passed away in order to give her daughter a faithful companion to keep her company, just like what Jade Rabbit does for Chang'a. Also, I think Bungie is shown to be loyal, fun, obedient, caring, and loving. Also, I like when Bungie received magical powers, which was the ability to shoot laser beams from her ears after a potion accidentally fell on her. Plus, I think Bungie and Jade Rabbit make a sweet couple together. Next is Fei Fei's stepbrother, Chin, voiced by Robert G. Choi. To me, this 8-year-old kid is kind of annoying, but he is pretty silly, playful, and bouncy, which is kind of common for most kids his age. However, Chin is also curious, like when he stows away on Fei Fei's rocket, He's a hardcore ping pong player, and he's also loyal to Fei Fei when he challenges Chang'a to a ping pong duel to win Fei Fei's photo. Next is the star of the movie, the mythical moon goddess Chang'a, voiced by Philippa Su, best known for playing Eliza Hamilton from the Broadway musical Hamilton. In my eyes, while Chang'a is a beautiful and kind woman, while on the moon and separated from Hoi, she becomes desperate and obsessed to get her hands on a certain gift in hopes to become reunited with her lover. The comic relief, Gobi, is voiced by Ken Jong, whom I've talked about in my blogs of Turbo, Goosebumps 2 Haunted Halloween, Wonder Park, and Scoob. And... I hear he'll be in Tom and Jerry's upcoming live-action movie. Now, Gobi is a pangolin who used to be Chang'a's most trusted advisor and a high-level member of the court until he was banished for singing his wonderful song to Chang'a, which caused the great darkness. To me, Gobi is playful, active, and friendly, and he seems to be a little anxious, and he gets attached to people very fast. Plus, I think Gobi can be noble and endearing. Also, I think his wonderful song is absolutely optimistic and sweet to listen to. Other voice actors in the film include John Cho, Ruthie Ann Miles, Kamiko Glenn, and five-time Emmy-nominated actress Sandra Oh. And now for my final words. Overall, Over the Moon is such an amazing animated movie to come from Netflix. The animation is amazing and beautiful, and it stays true to the Chinese culture. The soundtrack has fantastic and emotional songs. The main character, Fei Fei, is relatable and sympathetic, the side characters are cute, supportive, and fun, though one was kind of annoying at times, and Chang'a was an awesome character due to her backstory, her personality, her outfits, and Philippa Sue's voice performance. Plus, I like how the film uses Chinese mythology and how it centers on loss, which really tugs my heart. So... This is a movie that I highly recommend if you folks have Netflix. And trust me, this movie will make you and your family laugh, smile, scream, and cry. And so, I give Over the Moon a perfect rating of 100%. Well, that's all for now. But before I go, I need to see a full view of the moon outside my window. Wowie zowie. Take care, Chang'a. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power.